This is the captain of the Enterprise. Ship ship. Podcasting. The final frontier. These are the ridiculous introductions I am forced to read at gunpoint. Or should I say, phaser point. Welcome to Ship to Ship, yet another in the long line of tedious Star Trek podcasts. The show is hosted by David Lawler and David B. Anderson. The two Davids will take you on a journey through time and space every three or four weeks, boldly podcasting where no podcast has gone before. Seriously? This is what you're making me read? Take it away, boys. Can we change it up? Like, let's let's devote 25 minutes and then we'll 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 cut this shit out. Let's talk a little bit about Picard. I want to talk okay. a little bit about it because I, you know, I'm. How caught up are you on it, by the way? I'm on episode nine. I finished episode nine. Okay, good. I, I wrote, I I wrote my review. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna lay down um, an opinion that might surprise you. Okay. All right. Uh, this the show. Of course, I'm gonna s- stick with my staples. The show is 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 badly written. It's badly produced. And the majority of the actors that are appearing on the show are terrible, terrible actors, uttering terrible dialogue. It isn't planned very well. But I'm going to tell you this. The story could have been incredible if it were handled better. The, the whole idea, okay, I, and I was thinking about this when I wrote my review up today after seeing this most recent episode. <clears throat> I was um, thinking about what are the most important elements of the story. The first important element is that Picard is old, sick, and dying. The second important element is that Maddox, Bruce Maddox, fulfilled his desire to create a race of sentient androids. And the third important element to the story is a doomsday cult has infiltrated Starfleet. Now, if you took these three major ideas and you executed it in a different way, this could have been an incredible series. But instead... They, they went a little too far with the story arc idea, and they shot everything separately and then tried to recombine it into something and then chop that into 40-minute sections. Well, and I did notice, story. like, for a show that's called Star Trek Picard, mm. he's in it for maybe, like, a third of the show. That's why they needed so many people around. Because, again, he is physically, he, he can only do so much. It's kind of like when, when they have, like, those rules about, like, kids can only work for this amount of time to this amount of time. Yeah, It's, it's probably the like same way man. for him. He can only have, like, this amount of time in his day where he can actually do things. And so it's they have to have the characters around him. Now, I will say... The introduction of uh, another another Noonien Sung Noonien Singh, <laughs> I I'm okay with that. It was uh, nice. It was nice to see Brett Spiner without Brett makeup. Brett Spiner come in and basically do sort of human lore. That's the basic way I reckon. Kind, well, yeah, yeah. He had kind of a, a creepy lore feel to him, creepy but lore feel. They they changed him up, you know. And I uh, I also did like when uh, when uh, Seven of Nine showed up again. When she when she showed up in in sort of when they got she's going to the show up again. I predict that episode ten is going to be this major battle between the Borg cube, seven of nine, the assembled Borg that are there. Could be. Um, and possibly allying al- with um this this little new age sex android cult that's going on in this place. Possibly, but I did like when you know. she showed up. They they did the little very short musical cue of uh, the Voyager theme. Did you notice? It was, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I had it was, I had no problems with Jerry Ryan. Jerry Ryan is wonderful. Yeah, she's probably the best part of the show. Honestly. Um, Brett Spiner was wonderful. I was, was I was I was a little bit disappointed because because Riker and Troy's storyline didn't make much sense to me. Yeah, why um, why bring them in if you're just gonna have them come in and kill one of their kids like off screen? And, and yeah, and make a pizza, like just like bad. generations, just like generations. Yeah. Oh, and and this kind of weird. I mean, a lot of this doesn't really feel like people were were watching the ship, uh, watching the show that are writing it. You know, I, well, because... if you watch, and I watch the red letter media because they like they, they review it and they really don't want to review it, but they get so much comedy out of it. Mm. Of the whole idea is, if you only knew, you know, movie Picard, where he's best friends with Data. Like, he wasn't really best friends with Data on the show. No, no, he wasn't, yeah. But then yeah. you could also say, as you get older, your friends change and your reasons change, and he's an old man, and he's been through a lot, and he's very introspective. I, I did love when it started, and it was like they needed all these sort of moments that they had at the beginning that made me feel all kind of warm and fuzzy when you had Chateau Picard, and then they show they did Blue Skies, and they had Data, and I'm like, okay, I feel like, they're 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 easing me in to the show with some older references and I felt that was great. Um I also felt like the 
the creepy, uh, the, 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 the trouble is not creepy, but like the troubled scientist lady that killed, uh, yeah, uh, I call her, I call her the Leslie Bibb, Kristen Bell knockoff. Okay. Now she came in and she did, and somehow all is forgiven. She's like, yeah, I killed him. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that, and it's like, the worst you know, it, got was it's, from- it's a little too weak. I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to tell a story on this scale, you need to either go bigger or become more internalized instead of this scattered thing we're all over the place with all these other characters that we really don't care about i you know what i wanted to see in this show was mm. picard i wanted to see if it took a little bit longer because he can't get around as much or something i mean he he aged in a hurry over the last 10 years i would say but I would say- but doing what they did with starfleet and and starfleet's approach and attitude toward him kind of reminded me of the last couple of years of, of Next Generation where suddenly this guy who was like a fucking hero and a god and everybody looked up to him uh, was starting to be treated like shit and being sent on these missions where he gets tortured by Cardassians for no real reason at all. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. This attitude that he had. Uh, there were some, and, and actually the Red Letter Media guys made a really good point too where they said, is 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 Anne Magnuson the only admiral he can talk to? I mean, there are so many other admirals in Starfleet. Yeah, right. She keeps and, telling uh, him to shut the fuck up. I mean, like and like uh, oh god, Janeway. I forgot her name already. Yeah, Janeway's a fucking admiral. Yeah, you bring yeah, her in she, there. She's not, and she's just coming off of, uh, or I think she was coming and off. She of worshipped Picard. I don't think she, has much I mean, she could come in. She has. I think she has time. She's not doing much these days. I don't think. Yeah, I, I remember she was on Orange is the New Black. I don't yeah, even she's know said, but that's done. That's been done for like that's a year. That's over, yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, you could be doing things like that instead of this adversarial thing that's going on and everybody being so mean and horrible to one another. And that's that's what pisses off a lot of Star Trek well, you fans. know what? This could, this could almost dovetail into what's going on with the, with the panic. I hate to go back to it for a second, but it's I, like— I made an allusion to that in, in my review of last you, week's episode. When you, have, when you have a major event that's a big fucking deal— uh, thing rules change. Nine eleven things change, and you just accept it and like, no, this is what we're doing. Sort of, now. Okay, there was a response to nine eleven from Star Trek, and it was Enterprise, where in the third season of Enterprise, at the end of the second season of Enterprise, yeah. the Zindi attack Earth, seven million yeah. people die, uh, Trip's sister is killed or something. So there's a lot of hard feelings, but there's also a lot of somber attitude about okay we have to stop this we have to nip this in the bud we have to get out there and find out who did this to us and they spent a whole season telling this story and it, they t- they told it so well because they were able to tell self-contained stories within the story arc yeah well, we don't Whereas do that anymore in, the, in, in it's, picard it's, it's a if larger you, story if you miss one episode of picard you're completely lost and then thing is when i watch it they don't even do a previously they don't even do a previously they just assume you watched it Oh, I've been seeing previously. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I have to go back, but I could swear I didn't see any. Do you previously. skip the recap? Is that what you do? I just uh, let it play because I, I just watch it on CBS. You know, maybe like I'm I say, I'm watching this in a, in in my neighbor's apartment, and um, he doesn't watch the show, so <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't skip recaps for me. If you keep watching it on your on your own provider, mm-hmm. it'll skip the recap unless you tell it not to. Okay, yeah, I've, I've, uh, I just watched it. It's just, it. Like, it's on just like Netflix. If you do that with Netflix, they do that too. They skip the recap uh, uh, very quickly if you don't tell them not to. There's, 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 it's, it's disappointing to me because there's so much more they could be doing with the show, and I feel like there's, there's, there's a lot of like politics in the way, and also I feel like the process of writing isn't mm-hmm. okay. We watched because we've been watching X Files lately because I got the Blu-ray set. Oh, beautiful by the way. Oh, it's incredible what they did with the Blu-ray set. Um, But I'm watching X-Files, and I'm getting a feeling that I know how they're writing the show, and I also had that idea with how they're writing Picard, and also Discovery, too. And also a lot of these new shows that are coming out lately. What I felt with with the X-Files is that you had a bunch of people, script supervisors, maybe story editors in the room, or their top writers who knew the characters, would shout out ideas about what would be a good idea for an episode. And then a writer comes up with an idea, and... The producer would say, okay, that's a great idea. Go, do it. And they left the room, went to their home, and turned on their computer and wrote an episode, and it came from the heart. I was watching a really good episode tonight. It was called Paper Hearts. It was from the fourth season with uh, Tom Noonan playing a serial killer that Mulder busted a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And Mulder is beginning to suspect that this 
killer had something to do with the dis- disappearance of his sister, Samantha. And it was written by Vince Gilligan. Vince Gilligan is one of the great writers of the X-Files. He went on to create Breaking Bad. Yeah. He and Better is, Call Saul. Good to, uh, and that's Better an Call Saul. show, too. But he's one of the great writers of the show. And he wrote some of the great oh, – his first – I think his first episode that he wrote for them was Pusher. Pusher is an incredible episode. I, I recommend wholeheartedly people who who love good yeah, writing I'm watch the I'm trying to think what streaming service is X-Files on because I have everything. I have – it's probably on Hulu because it's a Fox property. I, I don't know what streaming service It was on Netflix. I know that. We, we were watching – we watched the Blu-ray. I got these Blu-rays for fifty bucks. The entire collection from England. It's a, it's a, a British pressing of it, and it's a complete series from the first season to the eleventh season that they did. You know the two, the most recent that, ones, the most yeah. recent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of which there were a handful of really good episodes in the, in that run too. But now for for a show like Star Trek Picard, what I think is happening is you've got twenty writers and producers in there shouting out plot points and narrative hooks at each other, and you've got a a, a beleaguered secretary who's just trying to transcribe all this well, stuff. Also, I think they're going like, and look, we only get, we only get Patrick's tour for two hours a day. We're going to have to figure something out. <laughs> you can, I mean, like th- there are ways around this and it's not, it's, it, I want to say, that's why I said this for, could, this, this, well, just the, okay. I want to reiterate the point that I was making was that there is a really good story in here. If only they had unlocked it and really kind of taken a step back and figured out how they're going to put everything together. And also, you could have had more of that Star Trek spirit. I felt like the, actually episode nine, most recent, this most recent episode that we watched, is the best episode so far of the show that I've seen. I did like it. Uh, I, you know, I, I think you know. Remember, first season, the first couple seasons of Next Gen were a little. Uh, so yeah, they were. That's true. But but there you go. And but you, we don't have time for do. this. He's but too old. Still, we can't, even then, though, this the, run. Those first two seasons had some really good episodes in them, though. I mean, really good yeah. standout episodes. I mean, remember the second season introduced the Borg. The second season introduced the storyline. Well, with Q was awesome. Uh, with, uh, uh, with with Q, and I hope you know. And Bruce Maddox was not Delancey. He's not doing anything. Come bring him in. Have him do something, please. Wouldn't it be uh, great if at the end, every like all is lost, and at the very end, Q comes in? <laughs> what is Q gonna play though? I mean, he's kind of like an old man now, you know. <laughs> Honestly, I've seen him in, you know, you see him in these weird sort of spin-offs. He's he's okay, you know, they did it, they did it with Brent Spiner. They just do a little little digital on him, you know. Well, sometimes Except, actually, you know, Q would appear as different kinds of things. You but you have that he, great he voice. He appears as Corbin Burnson. He would appear as snakes. He appeared as snakes in one episode and with his voice booming over them. Yeah, you could probably do something with Q. You know, but the problem about Q is that Q once you put Q on the table, it it supersedes anything any kind of um, intense situation that you're trying to because because this show Picard is all about trying to be intense and violent and nasty I still have a feeling that at the very end of it it will all be uh, a Picard sort of mental dream and they'll see it. he'll be in some sort of home like they'll, they'll say an elsewhere this or something like <laughs> it'll be in a snow globe or something I just know it and that's fine I, I'd be okay with that ending <laughs> yeah, I, I you know I gotta agree with Mike on Red Letter Media, that the story should have ended with all good things. Because the movies are weak. The movies are weak because they tried to make Picard an action hero. They tried to make him the focus when when the real strength of Next Generation was the ensemble storytelling. So you don't even like the the popular ones, the uh, the first contact? Like the I first thought contact I, I, I enjoyed Generations um, except for some of the really bad plot yeah that's that's the weird thing of like when we went back and we watched we watched generations and now i'm like i'm going back like did i maybe like that more than the rise of skywalker because (laughs) as as messed up as 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 dumb as generations is there is sort of a through line whereas rise of skywalker it's just we'll just throw as much star wars at you as you can deal with and and it'll kind of make sense and well i only my problems with generations i mean like it it felt like an episode of the show but it had some problems with it like i i i I didn't like the idea of them killing off picard's family just to give picard some kind of emotional weight they didn't really have to do that uh 
the Nexus has problems for me because I don't know what it is. It's not reality, but it is reality, and there's some kind of time shifting thing going on. I had problems with that, but but I, I enjoyed First Contact because it was fun. It was a fun movie. It was competently made. It was it had a lot of style and personality. Did not like Insurrection. Did not like Nemesis. I feel like we could have done without. I feel like the story of the next generation could have ended with the poker game at the end of all good things because mm-hmm. it's just closer to what the show was they're they're taking like picard and turning it into they're turning it into like something like what discovery was in a way and it's it's missing a heart it's missing heart that's it's i feel like there's no no, no heart in this enterprise if you will you know that's I, all. I it's it feels to me it's like Look, it's almost like a guy with a really big dick or a woman with really large breasts. Okay. And it's, they just get him out and he's like, here, this, this is enough. Here, see? And that's enough. It's supposed to be enough. So it's like, you know, Picard, you know, Patrick Stewart is the big dick or the big tits. He's like, here we are. That's all you need, right? <laughs> right? Well, he's fine in the show. I don't I don't have a problem he's with right. that. He's, but I do feel trying. like he did want to re-explore the character of Picard because that, that – well, that he's character. exploring him, all right. He's not Picard. He, <laughs> he's not that. He's that, not that character made him. It, it turned him into an icon. Well, and it's like you have, you have like all these. You could assume like he went through some sort of change as a as a person through the movies, and then there's like this twenty almost twenty year gap of other stuff that we don't know what happened to him. But it seems like he he did some stuff with Starfleet. He had this situation go to shit. And he just said, fuck it, and went to Chateau Picard. That's, that's, I guess that's what we're supposed to assume. He was just disillusioned by Starfleet. Because remember, Starfleet's been trying to fuck him over. It's like you said, like since the end of the last couple seasons of the show and through all the movies, he's always trying to, you know, there's a there's an insurrection, you yeah. know. There's, it's, it's all this stuff of Starfleet fucking him over. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... I don't know. Any, what, 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 I gave you my prediction for episode 10. I thought that the Borg were going to come together. Uh, with let's the, see. Uh, there, there, I think there will be a battle of some kind. That's usually how these things end. Uh, they, did a thing, they did the thing on Red Letter Media where I thought that possibly could happen where, you know, a seven of nine, she'll she'll try and do the Borg cube, like like become one with the Borg again, mm-hmm. something will go wrong or she'll die or something. And then she like her last dying breath will be to Picard. Like you have to merge with the Borg and become one or something. And he'll like at the very end, it, it'll probably end on a cliffhanger where, you know, he'll be like, I am, I am Lucutus of Borg. And that's how it will end, which by the way, I think would be the most ballsy kind of, I mean, the, the show is so clunky, but if they end on that, I might go, yeah, I yeah I could definitely see a locutus thing happening definitely yeah so especially like the Borg started to already identify him as locutus mm-hmm. so uh, yeah well, whatever happens I, I, they're not going to learn the lessons that's well you know clear. again <laughs> I can I can get worked up about Star Trek but it's literally like it's it, it's literally like a plague into the world at least I think so. And I'm like, at Star Trek, it's fun, but literally there's life and death going on out there, and I got bigger problems, and we all do. So I guess my final message to humanity is don't be an asshole. Do what you can to not be an asshole. You will have to be an asshole every once in a while and always protect yourself from assholes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do what you can to be nice, you know, until it's time to not be nice. Well, a little uh, Patrick Swayze there. That's right, and it applies to everything. All right, well... I guess that's it. All right. Let's wrap this fucker up here. All right. Finally, we got this thing up.